everyone welcome back or welcome to my channel i am here today with my dog jack and if you're new here my name's amanda i am an exotic animal caretaker and feel free to check out some of my other socials i would really appreciate it today i have a really fun video for you guys about white tree frogs this is everything you should know if you're gonna be keeping a White's tree frog. I'm gonna go over care, housing, diet, and just some fun facts for you too. Before we get started guys, do me a really quick favor, hit that like and subscribe button. You don't even understand how much I appreciate it. All right, well, I think that's everything I needed to say before we get started, so why don't we get right into it? <laughs> A white's tree frog. White's tree frogs are little colorful tree frogs that are native to Australia, Indonesia, and New Guinea. They can come in a variety of different colors, but typically they're on the green or blue side. They get to be about three to five inches and they can live into their teens, sometimes around 16. I believe the oldest one lived up to 21. These guys are really popular in the animal hobby because they are pretty easy to keep so long as you give them the proper requirements. And they have adorable little faces with big bulgy eyes, bright colors, and a silly little smile that makes them look adorable. They are also pretty easy to handle and I will get into that later when we talk more about temperament. I do have two beginner tips I tell anyone who has never owned a frog before. For one, you want to always be wearing gloves whenever you're handling them. Frogs and other amphibians have permeable skin, which means that gas and liquids can pass through. Sometimes the oils and toxins on our hands can be really damaging to frogs, and so if we keep them as pets and we're handling them all the time, the repeated exposure can get to be too much for them and lead to a sickness. So that's why it's so important to wear gloves. If you're picking up just the odd toad in the field and you don't have any with you, it's not the end of the world, but especially when they're your pet, it is very important. My second tip is do not use any harsh or really any chemicals. In my frog enclosures, when I'm cleaning their supplies, their bowls, their cage, whatever, I never use any harsh chemicals. Again, with the permeable skin, it is very easy for frogs to absorb any kind of toxins and chemicals can often lead to them getting very sick. There are definitely some purchasable amphibian safe cleaners, or you can clean with water or vinegar or something natural. Just look into your product before choosing it. All right, so why don't we start with caging? Because if you're going to get a white tree frog, you're gonna set up your cage first. You wanna make sure your cage is always set up and is just how they need it before you bring them home. Obviously this doesn't always happen, but we really hope that it will. So for a cage, you're gonna need at least a 20 gallon tall cage. These are arboreal frogs, they are tree frogs, and they will spend most of their time up in the air. Now, 20 gallon is just for one frog, and it is a minimum. I highly suggest something a little bit bigger, and especially if you have multiple frogs. But personally, I like to use a hexagonal tank. It is recommended as the best tank for white tree frogs. I would typically use glass for white tree frogs because they are rather high humidity, but as long as they're in something that holds the humidity well, then you can change the product. A couple little suggestions for you when picking out an enclosure. I personally find the front opening much easier. I really like them and in the long run, it's a lot simpler to take out arboreal species through a front opening, just personal experience. And my second suggestion is to look for an enclosure with a fogger hole at the top. These guys are sticky toes. They can climb on anything and they can get out of pretty well any gap. So having a perfectly fitted fogger hole that you can attach a fogger to, I personally find it's very useful. Okay, so you bring home your cage. Let's say you have your glass cage and now you need to set it up. What are you gonna look for? Well, let's start with substrate. We wanna keep in mind that these are pretty humid frogs. We wanna look for a substrate that will complement their environment. I typically use a mixture of soils with some moss in there to hold humidity, but you are gonna wanna make sure that they are chemical free. I also recommend staying away from anything that can easily be ingested. These guys will eat anything, fingers and substrate included, and we wanna stay away from anything that could be potentially damaging. Now, if you are looking for a little helpful cleanup crew, they do not clean up entirely, but they definitely help keep everything fresh. Then you could look into a bioactive setup in which you would need to be purchasing 
isopods and springtails and a couple other things. However, I'm not really going to go into the bioactive setup in this video. If you want to hear more about bioactive setups, I could create a tutorial for you guys. But if that's something you're interested in, please do look into it on your own time. I do highly recommend them. I really like them. But the requirements will be a little bit different. For example, we move into lighting. White tree frogs actually do not need UVB lighting. But if you're going to have a bioactive setup with some live plants, you will want UVB. And I actually do recommend putting some UVB on anyways. Just have it be a lower UVB bulb. To continue setting up though, we are next going to want to put in our foliage and our hides. Now, frogs can't tell that glass means that's the edge of their enclosure. So they often will rub their nose on the glass trying to get out. So I do suggest a lot of foliage because they'll tend to gravitate towards things that they can actually see. It makes them feel safer, less stress, you'll avoid that nose rub, and your cage will look beautiful. This is again a moment where if you're looking into something more bioactive, you have the option of doing live plants, and they are beautiful. But regardless, you just kind of want to cover the entire enclosure pretty well with some foliage. Now, frogs, unlike snakes, won't use a little hide. However, they will use different styled hides. I personally use this little, almost like a tree sort of hide and it just sticks onto the wall. They love it. They go in there all the time. I'm constantly finding them in there. The top pops off so it's easy to wash and it does have a little suction cup so I can place it as high or as low as I want. But unfortunately it doesn't really work anymore so it sits closer to the ground. I do suggest something like that but if you have enough foliage, it's definitely not necessary. Now for a water dish, I personally, with my frogs, like to give them as large of a water dish as possible. But considering these guys are arboreal, they're high humidity, they dry out very easily, and I do travel quite a lot and have other people taking care of my animals, I personally like the larger water dishes because they keep that humidity up and they are less likely to get empty. It's just kind of an extra precaution for myself. A little one is totally fine as well. You're just going to be filling it a little bit more often. And especially on those hot days, you want to make sure it doesn't completely dry up. One important thing when you are keeping any type of amphibian, you want to make sure that you are treating your water with dechlorinator. Do not be putting any extra chemicals in your water, just removing them. You can buy some RepTi-Safe water dechlorinator but even some for fish will work. You don't wanna be spraying your frogs with chemical water nor putting it in their water dish. Two of my suggestions when you are setting up is an automatic fogger. I find that foggers are a lifesaver, especially if you don't work from home and you're not home all the time to be misting your enclosure. If you go out for eight hours a day or longer, these guys really help. You just fill up the water bottle once a day and it either empties or whatever, you can kind of fiddle with it to fit your frogs. But it keeps the humidity where it should be and your frogs are much less likely to dry out and it is much less work for you. Another option would be a mister, something like a mist king that has more water droplets. I just personally enjoy the foggers. They're less of a wet moldy mess and more of a dry humidity. Okay, so we have our enclosure all set up. We have lots of foliage, a large water dish, the proper size enclosure, maybe a fogger or mister, and we're gonna say you put on a little bit of UV as well. Let's move into husbandry. What are we actually wanting to create for these frogs in this atmosphere? Well, first let's talk about heat. They don't need to be anything crazy hot, but they should have a gradient heat of about 80 to 86 degrees in their enclosure. Depending on how big your enclosure is, the size and wattage of the bulb you put on top will change. But you want to make sure that you are putting a heat bulb on top and the top area to be around 86 and the bottom to be around 80. It's okay if it's a little bit hotter or a little bit colder, you just want to make sure that it is ranging all those temperatures so that your animals can thermoregulate properly and keep themselves healthy. It is the optimal temperature for them to do well. Now your UVB and your heat lamp you're probably going to have on 12 hour shifts, daytime, nighttime. You can also do four hours on in the morning, four hours off, and four hours on in the evening as well, and then off for the night. But regardless, you just want to make sure you have a day-night cycle where you have your lights on and your lights off. Now the temperatures at night can drop when the lights are off. They can get to 72 to 78 degrees. Along with the heat gradient, you want to have a relatively high humidity. Typically it's suggested to keep it around 70%. 
not too much lower than 60 and not too much higher than 80. Again, when misting, you wanna make sure you have dechlorinated water in either your fogger or your misting bottle. Now for diet, these guys are carnivores and they will pretty well eat anything you put in front of their face, including your fingers. This definitely helps though, because in order to be healthy, they need a large variety of food many, many options of insects, and even the odd pinky they will eat sometimes. However, white tree frogs are much more prone to obesity than they are to be too skinny. So you wanna make sure you're not feeding them too often. Usually I feed every two to three days about a couple crickets worth, whether that's worms, grasshopper, whatever. But if you're noticing that your frog is on the thicker side, you may wanna cut down either how much you're feeding or how often you're feeding. Like I've said before though, each animal is very different, so you have to use your own discretion. This is just what happens to work for me. If you suspect that something is incorrect, make sure you follow up with a vet. We do also wanna make sure that our feeders are gut loaded, because if they haven't been eating nutritious food, then our animals we're feeding the bugs to will not be getting those nutrients. And those nutrients are vital to them being healthy. On top of that, you will wanna add calcium. I usually do this about once a week and I just dust their food. All right, so now you have your whole setup. You have everything you need in there, the proper husbandry, you know what to feed them. You are now ready to go and get your white tree frogs. Under the properly kept conditions, these guys make absolutely amazing pets. They are super handleable, and the more that you handle them, the more tolerant they get of it. They have so much personality. Like I said, they love to eat your fingers, they'll hop all over you, the little faces that they make. They are truly some of my favorite frogs. They're bright, they're small, they're scent free, and with the proper equipment and dedication, they can be very simple to take care of. I also wanted to mention that these guys are nocturnal. They are gonna be most active at nighttime, but sometimes in the evening or morning too. So, hopefully I have covered everything that you need to know about white tree frogs. I'd like to say you are more than prepared to go get one, but I do highly recommend finding a couple other sources for information, comparing them and doing your own research that way. But I'm very glad that you use my video for one of your sources. And I am more than happy to share my information with you. So if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will get back to them as soon as possible. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching and especially until the end of my video, you know how much it means to me. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Peace out.